Oh, hello, you caught me. I am in the middle of writing a postcard to send out. I decided that it was time to use up some master boards. I never really know what to do with them. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna make a bunch of postcards and send some snail mail. I thought, well, maybe I would come along and show you how to do this. Now you could use them in your journals and put them down in tucks and pockets for people to find and use, or you could use them yourself and just write a little note to somebody. Welcome, it's Dawn with For Grace Creations. I will tell you that I looked into it and most postcards are four inches by six inches in order to actually send them. When you feel a real postcard, it's about as thick as um, your thickest scrapbooking paper. My little master boards, I have been doing in this. And the pages are um, really thin. So I have been taking scraps and gluing them on to these pages. And what I did was I just ripped a page out. Obviously the back side is going to look like this because I only do this on one side. So what I did was I took a piece of just regular copy paper that I coffee dyed. Now you don't have to coffee dye it. And I glued it to the back. So the front is a nice collage. The back is just plain writing space. And what I did was I took a ruler and I just drew a line leaving address space on the right because whoever you send it to, their address goes on the right and your stamp goes here. The left has your writing space. Now this here postcard, I know they make stamps like Tim Holtz does and all, there's all kinds of stamps out there to make fun postcard stamps. I don't have any. What I've got is this cheapo thing from Amazon where you turn it and it uh, gives you letters up here or numbers. And I just turned it so it says postcard. And I put it in my ink. I stamped it down and it just says postcard. Now I did find that I have this. So permanent ink, not any oxide ink or anything that's gonna, if it gets wet, run. And you could take this and stamp it anywhere. So now you have this, or mine is this. So that here, what I did was, I took the ruler and just drew lines that are not fully there. Do you see that? And I did ink around the edges of this, although you don't have to. Now, this base, you could leave it like this or you could do whatever you want on the front. For now, mine's blank. And I'm just writing a note. So let's make some more together. And while we do that, let's ponder the purpose of postcards and snail mail. So, <laughs> okay. Let's talk about cleaning house for a second. Bear with me, you'll understand where I'm going in just a second. So would you agree with me that there are different levels of house cleaning? What I mean is, okay, so number one would be tidying up, just uh, walking around the house and putting away piles that are laying around, you know, clutter, toys, laundry, dishes, that kind of thing. Just picking up random things that are on the counter and putting them away random just piles. Do you know what I'm saying? And then two would be a surface clean, you know, maybe wiping crumbs off the counter, uh, sweeping, dusting, that kind of thing. Just basic surface cleaning. And then number three would be disinfecting, eliminating those germs, wiping the surfaces that people touch all the time. And then number four would be deep cleaning, you know, hands and knees scrubbing, like using a toothbrush uh, where you can see around the shower that that orange stuff, which by the way is the beginning of mold, where that's showing up. You know, that kind of deep cleaning. Well, okay guys, so 
the Bible is very much similar to that. It's like um, peeling away the layers of an onion. There's more and more. Um, the more you peel, the more there is. Um, just like house cleaning, there's different layers. So, um, for instance, okay, you grab your Bible and you're just, you're reading. You just read. Um, you start in the beginning of Matthew and you read all the way to the end of uh, the book of Matthew. Okay. You might get some stuff out of it. There might be some good stories. It might, you know, you might pick up on some things. That's great. Wonderful. Always reading your Bible is a good thing. But, Okay, let's take a layer off and maybe we could ask ourselves, okay, how did what I read apply in the days that it was written? Maybe how does it apply to the church now corporately? And how does it apply to me personally where I'm at today? Grab pen and paper, start taking notes. Um, dig even deeper maybe look up some of those words, um, the biblical definitions and the worldly definitions like Webster's Dictionary. Look at commentaries. For instance, um, John Corson has a great commentary on the Bible. Um, you could find coordinating Bible verses for what you have just read. You could go to blueletterbible.org and um, but the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. Really, it is. So, for example, okay, Proverbs 10, 32 says the lips of the godly speak helpful words. Well, okay, what are helpful words? Well, Ephesians 4, 32 says that we're to be kind, compassionate, and forgiving. Romans 1, verse 12 tells us to encourage each other in the faith. 2 Corinthians 13, 11 says, encourage each other. Ephesians 4, 29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building each other up. And it does go on to say, speaking words of grace. Um, Colossians 4, 6 says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. So seasoned speech um, is truthful. Ephesians 4.15 says speaking truth in love. So is what you're saying true? Is it loving? Is it necessary? Is it kind? So in the purpose, uh, in pondering the purpose of postcards, Let's use what we know and take this week to take time to speak helpful words to people that we know by sending them a postcard. You know, send little words of encouragement, kind words, words of truth to build them up. What better way to just give a little bit of helpful words than to send a postcard. They're not expecting it, right? How happy are you when you get some snail mail that is not bills? It, it's fun. And what better thing than to get something that's building you up, making you feel wonderful. Do you know what I'm saying? <coughs> so another thing, you know, let's look at, here's another example. Let's look at um, Genesis 1.1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So if we take this house cleaning thing, this onion thing, and dig a little deeper. Okay, so let's take the word God. In the beginning, God. So the Hebrew word used here is Elohim. And it means supreme one, strong and mighty one, almighty it's actually the Hebrew word for God. Um, and then, did you know that in Hebrew, words that end in I am, im, indicates a masculine plural? I mean, that's so cool. Elohim. God is masculine, but plural. 
Yeah, plural. One God and three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So right there in the very, very first sentence of the Bible is the Trinity, three in one. So in Hebrew, El is single and Elohim is plural. In the Old Testament, um, El is used uh, in combination with other words when they're, you're talking about God. <clears throat> For example, El Roy or El Roy, I don't know how to pronounce it. It means the God who sees me. El Shaddai means God is almighty. So let's go to another word, um, created. In the beginning, God created. So if you dig a little deeper, you're going to figure out, obviously, God was not created. He is creator. And I find it cool that he literally just speaks a word and things come into being. Uh, the the word create created in um, the original text, it means forming something from nothing. And I find it cool that the Lord created beginning with the universe itself. So like, okay, the word the heaven or some versions say um, in the beginning God created the heavens it's not that there's more than one heaven. What it's saying is, if you look and dig deeper, the heaven, okay, it's like this. Look up. What do you see? You see the sky. Um, you might see clouds. You might see blue sky. Depending on the time of day, you might, with your naked eye, see the sun, the moon, the stars. It's the things you can see. But then there's another level of the sky. It's space, what we would see like, via telescope, things our natural eye can't see. But then there's even further what a telescope can't see. You know, the planets, the things that are even farther. So in the beginning, God created the sky and all those levels of what we can and can't see up there, right? And then he created the earth. So it's just cool to me that you can dig deeper and deeper, no matter where you're at in the Bible, to find a little more. And we barely even scratch the surface with just those two examples I have. Um, I mean, going back to speaking truth and love and building each other's up, each other up. There's different meanings of the word love. So in, in our English vocabulary, vocabulary, I can't, I haven't had enough coffee. We say love. I love puppies. I love my daughter. I love my grandchild. I love my husband. I love chocolate. I love the warm sunshine. I love snow. We use the word love interchangeably, but in the original text, there are different levels, different meanings of the word love. And I'm not going to tell you that. Maybe that's something you could do is go and take the time and figure out those different meanings of love. For now, we're talking about um, digging deeper to figure out uh, uh, the Lord, our identity, our purpose, and purpose in little things like just a simple postcard. Now, granted, there doesn't have to be a purpose for sending somebody a note. But let me ask you this. Have you ever found yourself without any, for, without any reason just sending somebody a note and it's not kind? Usually when somebody just takes the time to send a little note, it's a love note. You know, it's kind. It's encouraging. It's, it's not fake. Like, oh, you look so beautiful today when in all reality, they've been sick for a while. They haven't gotten dressed. They're wearing a robe. You know, they're that kind of a thing. No, you're, you're speaking truth in love. So <clears throat> let's just maybe take this week, maybe um, two weeks, and randomly put a stamp on a postcard, on a letter, 
and uh, write a few words of encouragement. Now, building each other up in faith, you know, if you don't know what to write to somebody, why don't you just simply write truth that the Lord has told us? Our identity in Christ is right there in the Bible. As a matter of fact, if you open your Bible to the book of Ephesians and just start reading from the very beginning, go through the end of chapter two. You're going to find words in there that you could write to people. For instance, you could tell them, remind them that they are treasured. They are dearly loved, forgiven, adopted, all kinds of wonderful identity points there in Ephesians. And really, you're encouraging them in faith, but you're encouraging them in truth and love, kindness and grace. So let me know if you plan to join me this week in sending out some postcards that you handmade to send just some sweet little love notes to a few people. You know, you just stop for a minute and, and in the quiet and, and think about who might need a little encouraging. You may have names come to mind that you're like, wait, what? Well, I would just send them a little note because you never know that might be the Lord prompting your heart because he knows the details in other people's lives that we don't know. So maybe that note that you write and send, uh, maybe I say it takes five days to get there. Maybe that note in five days, that's going to be the exact day, the exact time they need it. So let me know if you made some of these. And I shall see you later, everybody. Take care. Thanks for being here.